Okay, guys. And I hit press stop on my previous video, and it's a good chance <laughs> that I won't be able to actually link this video with the other one, which was me um, mixing the puree with the lye water. I mean, with the lye. <laughs> eh, I guess we'll go from there, whatever. So, I'm taking my pureed pumpkin with a little bit of coffee to give it, you know, some more liquid in there. And my lye mixed with sodium lactate, and I'm going to put it into my hot oils. I'm just going to go on and pure it in there. some chili sauce. I'm going to start talking about food. Okay. So this video is me doing hot process. This is how I do it. No stick blender, no lid. And you will get to see exactly what happens, <laughs> how I do hot process. Because every time somebody asks me, I try to tell them, but you know, so many people do hot process differently. And I've watched so many videos until I actually started doing hot process this way. I watched a lot of JJ Navas videos and his company is called Soapalicious. And on his Facebook is Soap Inc. Soap.inc. And he posts a lot of his videos on how he makes hot process. And when I seen the way he did it after I watched so many videos, I was just like, well, I tried it a couple of different ways and I was just like, this is not, I don't know, it's just not really working for me. And when I was like, well, I'm going to just try and do how process like he does and see what, how, what happens. And, and this is the way I do it now. <laughs> this is it. sure if he actually uses a stick blender every now and then. He might, but I don't. I've never actually seen him use a stick blender, but there might be the rare occasion where I actually have missed it and he actually did. But I don't. I don't mind the stirring. It's a, it's a lot of stirring, but at this point I'm pretty much used to it. I don't get any volcanoes because I stir so much a lot. <laughs> I think it's because I like I like the hands on. I like I just like to start. Maybe that's what it is. I hope you guys didn't see the pot good. I wonder if I should make the tripod a little taller. Let me take the temperature and see see where it's at. 134. Cool. Okay. So it's got some climbing to do as far as heat. I cook on high, by the way. Not that not low. I turn it all the way up. And 
and I make sure I keep the sides scraped down. That's another thing. I stir a lot and keep the sides scraped, which is the key to not having so many of those or none at all really. Having none of those um, chunks of soap in your hot process. Because a lot of people, when they do it, they, they let it sit and they put the top on it or the saran wrap or whatever they use. And they let it sit so long and then the edges get all hard. And then and a few videos I watched where the pe person said they don't scrape down the sides at all once it gets like that because you don't want the hard chunks in your soap. Well, that's because you don't stir it. You don't stir it. The, you, or you don't stir it and you don't scrape down the sides. Everything gets hard. And then, of course, now you can't scrape it down because <laughs> it's hard as a rock. And then you definitely don't want that in your soap. So, yeah, that's what I do. I scrape everything down. I keep it scraped. It's just what I do. Mainly, this is this is pretty much it. There ain't nothing right now. There's nothing fancy going on. All it does is it's cooking. It's going to keep getting uh, hotter, and I'm going to stir and keep the sides scraped down. I stand here. I stand here and I babysit the pot. Pretty much. I mean, if you don't want to do that or if you just want to put it on because you got to run and go do something for like 15 to 20 minutes then to each his own but I don't leave my pot because on a rare occasion what if that one time I do get a volcano or something and I'm not standing here sir I think it's because the reason why I don't get volcanoes is because I stir so much that one I think though I had one volcano and I put it on my hot process group I took a video of it because I wasn't feeling well and I was trying to watch so you think you can dance at the same time so I just was like I didn't feel like stirring so I would stir like this and then I would put it down and I would go watch TV for like five minutes and I would come back and it was like already to like applesauce and Vaseline stage. I'm like, wow, that was fast. <laughs> and then it started a volcano. I'm like, oh my God. So yeah, I learned to, yeah, even if I'm not feeling well, don't go watch some TV and then forget about my hot process. <laughs> that could have been a disaster. My one and only volcano because I wasn't paying attention or I wasn't feeling well, mostly. And I wasn't stirring as much as I usually do. I don't mind the stirring though. That's why I said when you're doing high process, you have to find what works for you. Because if this is not if this is not what you feel like doing, then you need to find a different method, pretty much. Which would probably be one of those lid saran wrap videos, I guess. But this is just what I do. I don't mind it. It don't take it don't take extremely long. I mean, I don't stir completely the whole time. I do let it sit for a little bit. But this is pretty much, pretty much it. This is what I do. So when people are like, well, what do you, how long is this supposed to take? It takes as long as it takes. Sometimes 45 minutes to an hour. I think it really depends on your recipe sometimes. I think it, that's what I think. But yeah, about an hour. Sometimes I like to just let it sit. For a second or two, and then I <laughs> picked to stir it again. So, this is pretty much, yeah, this is it. Just stirring and making sure you keep the side scraped down, making sure you're keeping it stirred so it doesn't volcano or whatever. And, mm -hmm. so I'll bring you back when it looks like is actually going to the next stage okay so it's been a few minutes maybe like 10 I don't know 10 15 minutes I don't really look at the clock <laughs> I'm just assuming and <clears throat> and it's really thick now so it won't be long before it hits that applesauce applesauce phase 
nice, really thick. That's good. It looks good though. You can see everything in there from the pumpkin puree. It's gonna be a really good looking soap. No added color or anything. You know, I did think about putting some cocoa powder in there, but I didn't. Mm -hmm. Slide against it because the cocoa powder, well, yeah, the cocoa powder is going to make it darker, but you know what? So is the fragrance oil. But I did think about it. I'm not going to, though. But yeah, it's really thick. So, whereas I like to stir, the average person who doesn't <laughs> can just stick blend it to this stage. But try not to stick blend it too much because you don't want to send it. You don't really, I don't know. I guess you don't really want to send it too far ahead, like straight to applesauce or mashed potato stage. But I guess, you know what? I don't stick blend my hot process, so I don't know. I guess you could if you wanted to, but you just got to make sure you keep the side scrape down because you don't want no crusties in your soap. No crusties, not at all. And while you're stirring and it goes up the sides, it's fine. But once you stop stirring, scrape it down. So let's see. Where we at? We are at. 159. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, this is what I got for. Yeah, that's what I'm going to use. So, it's pretty much going to be <laughs> brown. It's going to turn brown because of the vanilla. Um, and I'm going to section something off to put in my small Pringles can. It's a small one. What I did was, this is the original top here, and this was the bottom with the aluminum piece. All I did was cut this part off and turn this into the bottom. So I put a piece of <clears throat> freezer paper and three rubber bands, which I wrapped, uh, wrapped around twice each rubber band, and um, put the top back on. I usually also put that on a layer of saran wrap on that too, but I didn't have any saran wrap. So, yeah, all I'm going to do is put it in here, bang it down, put it to the side. I usually don't insulate my soaps or anything like that. I just put it on the, on the stove or sit it on the counter and leave it there till the next day. That's what I do. In the beginning, I was trying to insulate and do all the other stuff because you just got to... You just gotta find works for you. I was doing it at first, but now I don't really do it so much. I don't do it. I just put it to the side. <laughs> I don't insulate. If it gets a gel ring, oh well. I was at first also putting stuff in the fridge if I was you. Well, no, I still do put something in the fridge if I use too much of something. Like, if I'm doing cold process, I've used milk, honey, uh, what else? If I put I don't know if you this other stuff that you can put into your soap as well that'll make it heat up all really crazy like beer you would throw that right in the freezer or the fridge probably the fridge maybe the back okay oh ah, yeah look how thick that is now mm -hmm. that's really thick and it looks so good you just thought I was making a pumpkin pie in here that looks so good If it wasn't for the smell, I might mistake it for food. <laughs> Sorry for the shaking camera, guys. My kitchen is really small, so I have this, um, this card table, I guess you can, you know, one of those fold-up tables you get from, like, Walmart or something, and you play cards on it. Yeah. Let's call it a car table. I have one of those and I usually set that up when I make soap. So I have some counter space because I do not have any counters in here. I got like a half a counter <laughs> in this tiny house. And the other side of the counter on the sink 
has the dish rack and that's where you put the dishes. The but the other side of the sink, which is the half a counter, you know, that's where you tr you try and keep that as clear as possible. Because if you're trying to prepare food or something like that, then you know you gotta use that tiny little space. But for a big old pot and all this stuff, I try to just fold out this card table and it gives me extra extra space. Sure we're scraping that down. Make sure we are scraping it down. And just wipe it off on this whisk. There you go. Wipe it off on the whisk. So now when I rebatch, now that is different. I don't sit over the pot <laughs> and babysit it like this because it's already done. All I do is I shred it with a, I grate it up with a, a cheese grater, which is like one of those little handheld tiny things you get probably get from the dollar store. And I sit there and I grate it up and I put it in the center crock pot. I'll add like, I'll start off with like add an ounce of milk or something. And I'll just put the top on it and I'll leave it for like, I'll check it in like 15, 20 minutes. See how it's doing, stir it a little bit, see if I want to add some more milk or not. Put the top back on, come back in about 15, 20 minutes or so. You know, and I, I do it like that. And essentially you could also do your hot process like that as well, but sometimes when you do that, you come back and it's a volcano all over the place. So you really don't know, but with... The um, brie batch is already done, and it's just melting down and getting all goopy so you can just pour it into a mold, you know, add some fragrance or color or whatever. But this is cooking, so this I babysit. The brie batch, no. And I don't understand why people hate rebatching this. <laughs> rebatching is great because it's like you have a chance to turn something old into something new you know what not even something old you have a chance to turn something that you done jacked up something that didn't pan out for you maybe you forgot something an oil fragrance or or it's just the overall design just sucks <laughs> which has happened to me i uh made um it was a cold process so i was trying to do some type of hanger swirl but before i could even get it into the mold and try and do anything everything got so thick I had to just like plop all the colors on top and I tried to see if I could salvage it by trying to do push the colors down into the soap and doing a hanger swore anyway. They didn't really go too far down in there and it just, it was so bad. And then the colors didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. And then on top of that, the fragrance morphed and it smelled so bad. And I was just like, ugh, I could possibly have kept the soap the way it was and say whatever, you know. It's okay. I could possibly have grown to like it, but the fragrance was, it smelled really bad. It was Bedtime Baby and from one of the suppliers, and it smelled so bad. And I was like, okay. Well, I think two, I waited two days. Did I wait a whole two days or one? I think I waited two days, and then I shredded that mess up. I shredded it up so fast, and I rebatched the crap out of that. And I turned that into my 24, if you go into my Facebook page under Lafia Wilborn, um, I have a public page, Fia's Handmade Soaps, and it's on there under 24 karat citrus green tea soap. <laughs> I know that's a mouthful, but I thought it was, I just liked that name. And it turned into something beautiful. It was a pretty green I did a gold mica line throughout it and it was just it smells heavenly I used green tea fragrance oil with that and I mixed it with um, tenfold orange with I think lemongrass and I might have added some uh, litsia in there as well litsia can be essential oil as well and it smells so good you know what I don't think I did I think it was just lemongrass and orange tenfold but with along with the green tea fragrance oil but it smells heavenly okay yeah, it's thick now it's real thick oh and i am shaking the camera like crazy i'm sorry i'm trying not to shake the camera too much oh yeah but i love rebate 
kitchen because it's like a it's a do-over I messed up so let's shred shred this mess up and get in the pot and see what I'm going to do next with it and turn it into something else and I think someone in one of the groups said that one of the soap groups said oh yeah you can rebat your soap but you can't sell it and I said well why not they didn't <laughs> they don't know <laughs> I'm like well why do you think you can't sell it what's what's wrong with rebatch soap you it's still soap you didn't all you're doing is just you know giving yourself a a clean slate it's the same oils and everything you just add a little bit more liquid and you melting it down and just you know turn it into something else Yeah, I'm probably one of the few people that love rebatching. I don't know. I just do. It, it doesn't feel like a, a chore to me. So if I mess something up, I can't wait. I had some um, colorful soaps that I made a while ago. A few months ago. I was trying to do some, test out some baby shower designs. And they were all really colorful, but they didn't turn out the way I wanted them to. I was trying to do the designs and the individual um mold like the brambleberry um square is a big silicone mold and it has like 12 individual rectangle cups in it uh yeah i used that and i couldn't really get the designs to come out in the individual mold so i was like oh because usually every design i could think of was the design would be nice if you cut the soap and you would see the design in the soap but these were individual um soaps so you wouldn't be able you wouldn't be cutting them open to see the design so uh, I got frustrated with that and I was like whatever and I had to just rethink of something else I decided to just do loaf molds instead of the individual molds and so I put them to the side I let them cure for a while I didn't use them they were all different colors they were pinks they were blues they were purples greens uh, some mixtures yellows and I put it to the side and then I was like well you know what I'm gonna try confetti soap and I did, my last soap was the confetti soap, and it turned out awesome. After I shredded, it was only like six, six bars of soap, but I shredded it, and it came out to about 20 ounces. And I think I'm at the mashed potato, mashed potato no, applesauce stage now. I'm at the applesauce stage now. So I shredded it, it came out to 20 ounces, and I bought a big five-pound mold, and I said I'll decide to... I decided to use the big mold for that one and I only made two and a half pounds of soap and then I mixed the 20 ounces of shredded inside of it and I added some activated charcoal um, only two and a half teaspoons of activated charcoal and it turned it into a nice deep gray which is what I wanted I didn't want it to be black and it was beautiful that soap is beautiful so if you also go on my Facebook page Fia's handmade soaps. You will see that soap as well that I just did a few days ago. My uh, and I scented it with cedar and amber from Brambleberry, and it smells divine. Oh my god, it smells so good! All right, guys, I'm rambling on and on, but we are at the applesauce stage. Yeah. Can you guys see that? I'm not sure. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. You see how yeah. You see that? The applesauce applesaucey looking. Yeah. That's the applesauce stage. Where it starts to look like it's separating and it looks all applesaucey. Yeah. That's what we're looking for. That's exactly what we're looking for. Oh, I pushed the table again. Sorry. This camera's going to be all rocky, probably. That's the only thing about have, doing this on a card table, or regular table, and not a counter, which is unmovable. <laughs> I don't have a counter, <laughs> so I don't have a choice but to put it on this table. Yeah. So, it's going to, um... Is going to try and separate on you, which is fine because all you do is stir it back together. 
You just stir it. I mean, most people just leave it and put a top on it or whatever and just let it. But you know me. If you haven't, if you haven't gotten to know me by now, <laughs> I am a stir. <laughs> so I like to stir, 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 stir. I use a whisk until it gets. I probably stop using the whisk when I get to the mashed potato. I don't know if people call that the Vaseline stage. To me, it looks like mashed potatoes. But once I get to the mashed potato stage, it gets too thick for the whisk, and I just switch over to the spatula or a, a big silicone spoon. That looks so good. And don't forget, even though you're stirring all of this and it's getting all apple saucy, don't forget to scrape down the sides. Because this is when, just leaving it on the sides like that, this is when it would really start to get hard. And you don't want to do that. Sometimes I even take a, um, it depends if I let the spatula sit on the side too long. Sometimes these, uh, you know, these little extra pieces here, I'll take a napkin or paper towel or something and I'll wipe this off because this on here, they'll, um, it'll start to get hard as well. And when you're stirring, you don't want that, these hard pieces on here to fall back in there. Okay. Can you see that, you guys? Can you see that separating? The applesauce. I'm trying to zoom in so you guys can see. You see, there's like a layer of oil here. It starts it's starting to separate. That's the applesauce stage. Uh, even though I said that already, <laughs> but it's definitely it's really separated now. All the oil is coming out. It's all coming out. And all you do is stir it back. Mm -hmm. Zoom you out, back out again. There you go. I'm sorry, I keep going, twirling you guys around. But I just want you to see the different stages for those of you who don't know to know what to look for. But sometimes I know there is a rare. There's rare occasions where this stage will be skipped. I think that has happened to me before. Even though the only time it happened to me is the one time I had the vo that volcano because I was watching TV and not in here stirring like I usually do. And it just totally skipped the applesauce feed, uh, stage and went straight to mashed potato <laughs> and it started bubbling and next thing you know it was just poofing out of the pot. So that was the only time that I actually skipped. It's because I didn't stir for a while and I wasn't even, probably because I wasn't even in here and I was watching TV, which you should not be doing while making soap. But I didn't feel right. I didn't feel good and I didn't feel like standing up and <sighs> but even sick. I mean, I wasn't like hacking or, or coughing or it just, you know, sometimes when you feel a little off, you feel like you, a cold is coming on. And even though it might not, it might be just like one of those 24 hour things where you just feel bad. You're not like coughing or, you know, or no sore throat, not yet, but you just feel, generally feel bad. Like you might be getting sick. I, it was one of those days. But even sick or whatever, gotta make soap because you just love it so much. <laughs> okay, I think it has changed right in front of our eyes. It is definitely on its way to mashed potato stage. Because while it's sitting here, if you see, that it's not really, it's not separating like it was. not separating like it was before it's just sitting here so we're on to the mashed potato stage I thought this was going to be a short video where I was going to be like pausing it a lot or something because I didn't have anything to talk about but here I am I'm rambling 
Okay. Yeah, it's getting kind of thick for the whisk. So, in a second, I'm about to let this whisk go <laughs> because it's getting too hard to stir. Yeah. Okay, here we are. We are at the mashed potato stage. You see this? It looks like a bowl of yams or mashed potato or sweet potatoes <laughs> at this point. Yeah, this, we are here. No more applesauce stage, it's over. And it happens that quickly. One minute it'll look like it's separating, and once you stir it back together, it'll be like this. That means you're on to the next stage. So. And the reason, another one of the reasons why I love how it processes is because it's the easiest thing to clean up. Because afterwards, it's already soup. So you pour water in this pot, and it just like dissolves <laughs> and soon I will be zap testing Definitely at the mashed potato stage, and it's almost done. What's the temperature? Sorry, that was the stove. I tried to grab the the thermometer too fast. Pull the damn greed off of there. Sorry about all the shakiness. I have to figure out a if hopefully if I can figure out a better place to put the tripod, but I don't know where the heck I could put it because there ain't nowhere else to put it. <laughs> oh well maybe next time I'll put it here on the stove and just keep the pot here on the table that would that would probably work I wish I would have thought about that before I started the video <laughs> but I didn't <laughs> so bear with me please thank you guys for watching anyway I know I don't know if you find this video boring or You'll be one of the people who just look at the video and say, Oh my god, she's doing that wrong. Why is she making a hot process like that? Where's the top in the saran wrap? It? Well, yeah, well, yeah, I didn't do that. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry if I've rocked your world with all the stirring. <laughs> oh boy. Oh yeah, it looks good. Now, you see this? This looks like to me like it's done but so it hit the mashed potato stage and you stirring it a little you know stirring it or folding it over is what I'm doing really and you know it's really done when it's not really doing anything anymore now sometimes when you get to the mashed potato stage it'll it'll still be doing something it'll look like it's starting to get air in it like that's where the volcano come from it'll start to look like it's um getting um poofy and then there's your volcano but when i stop stirring nothing happens like there's no bubbling there's no nothing and it's 200 how many degrees did i say it was 192 about 200 because it keeps jumping so it's about 200 degrees it's not doing anything so to me this would be done but it's still on I didn't turn it off yet because I want to zap test it first and zap testing is just I always test uh, zap test my hot process even though I already know when it's done this like after this once it hits mashed potato, mashed potato stage give it like five minutes or so and it should be done but in the case you don't, you're not sure, zap test it. So to me, this looks done. It's not doing anything. So I am going to, what I do is, as you can see, even while I'm doing all this, I'm still keeping everything scraped down. Because you don't want those chunks in your soap. You really don't. So... So what I'm going to do is take a little bit of this. I don't want a big piece, just a little bit. And I can't seem to really get it. <laughs> okay. 
There we go. So, take their little pieces only a little bit. And I like to smash it down a little bit to try and get it to cool off a little bit more. And once it cools off, I will put my tongue to this, the piece of soap. And if it gives me a zip, I know it should stay on and keep cooking. If it does, if it just tastes like soap, which <laughs> it always does, with, and soap is pretty nasty, then I know it's, I will turn this off and I will add my super fat and what else am I adding? my coconut milk and section it off and add my pumpkin to one piece and put the unscented into the Pringles can. Done. Always know where my soap's done. And I turn off the pot. So pretty much that's it. You it's it's that simple. You go from applesauce stage after applesauce stage, it don't last that long, maybe about ten minutes or so. You just stir it back together, and once you see that it's together and it's starting to look like mashed potatoes, you're probably like five or to ten minutes away from it being done. Once you keep stirring, you just pretty much, you, as you saw, I just kept stirring it. I didn't really leave it alone. You keep stirring it, and you won't get any volcanoes. I didn't get any volcano this time. You just, that's, that's probably why, because I stir so much. And when it starts to look like this, it's done. It didn't do anything, it didn't rise or anything, so I know it's done. So now I'm going to add my super fat. You know what, do I want to, hmm, I don't know if I want to heat it up. Yeah, we'll just add, wait, is it cold? Because it is a little, it's a little chilly in here, so as you can see, my shea butter started to solidify a little bit. I would put it back in there, but you know what, I want to warm it up a little bit. Give me a second so I can warm up the shea butter. Okay, I added the shea butter before I even press the unpause button, so I just put it in there, and now I'm just throwing it around. See, I'm gonna just add it in there, and I left the water on, of course, because I was rinsing out the little cup that the shea butter was in. Okay. I love how process. I don't know. I just, I love it. I love it a lot better than cold process. I don't know. I feel like there's always some type, type of pressure for cold process to do swirls and pretty things. But hot process, everyone always um, expects yourself to be rugged looking, you know, a little, you know, aged or whatever. And I don't have any. And I really have any expectations to do swirls and stuff. Even though you can. I don't. Not yet. Okay, so... What I am doing is adding some batter or some soap to my Pringles can. I was going to like, I don't know, section, fill up the two pound mold first and then do this, but I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to fill up the little one first. Why not? Why not? And give me a second, let me bang this down.
just a little bit. Just put a little bit on top. Yeah, just a little bit. I don't know if you guys can see that. I hope so. Okay. Let me bang it down some more. Just like that. I don't do anything to it. Now, what I'm going to do with this is, this is my coconut milk. I'm going to add about, um, I guess this over here. I'm going to add about two tablespoons. I like to let, add a lot of honey. I'm going to add two tablespoons of honey to this main batch. Okay. Make sure I keep that scrape down because it's still warm. I mean, it's still hot. It still looks good. I'm going to add two tablespoons. To what I do is I'm going to put the honey in here and then I'm going to pour it. I want to add it to the coconut milk. And I'm dripping honey on my table. <laughs> Because when you, um, you can add honey straight to the batch the way it is, but you really want it to, I'm going to take the top off, you really want to disperse it in something because you don't want honey pockets, which will cause your batter to heat up from the sugar alone, first of all. And I need some more honey. Yeah, your, bat your batter will heat, it as, well, it's already cooked, but your soap is going to heat up from the sugar, from the honey. So... I like you, you really want to dissolve it in some type of liquid. Put it in there and like warm it up. Let it dissolve real good. You ain't even got to like warm it up a lot. Just, you know, just enough for it's not so thick. And I usually dissolve it into whatever liquid I'm using at the moment. It could be, I've done it in goat's milk, olive vera juice, coconut milk buttermilk because I usually I don't because I don't use water so um well you would use distilled water but I don't use water okay. so once again I'm gonna go and heat this up okay so this is the coconut milk with the honey. Okay, everything is still good. There you go. Yeah, all I did was heat up the whole mixture with the honey in it and just, um, I stirred it with one of those little mixer things. This thing, you know, a little frother I got from Amazon. Because the one I got from Brambleberry, uh, I, I didn't have it that long, maybe a, a couple months, maybe a few months, um, five months or so, and it just stopped working. Oh, the whole thing smells like warm honey. And I still did not add my fragrance yet, so everything is going good. So when you add milk or whatever at the end of your cook and you see how fluid this is, how, you know, how soft it is, soft, I meant, <laughs> yeah, how fluid it is, it's not so thick and, and hard. That's um, because of the extra liquid, which is the milk and the sugar from the honey. 
but you don't necessarily have to add honey. I just wanted to add honey to this batch to my pumpkin soap. It's usually just milk, coconut milk or goat's milk. I usually add at the end with my super fat. And now my pumpkin fragrance, which smells really good. This um, pumpkin fragrance has a spice. It's really, I don't know, I smell a lot of cinnamon. It smells really good. But yeah, this is this one is more, <clears throat> I think, heavy on the spice. But it smells really good. Oh, God, it smells good. Just stirring, making sure the uh, fragrance oil is in there good, making sure the fragrance is in there nice and mixed up. It smell like cinnamon and nutmeg in there. Yeah, it smells really good. Like a hot pumpkin pie. Okay, so I can pretty much put it in the mold now. I like to make sure, you know, apparently, you should know me by now with the stirring, but I like to make sure the fragrance is definitely in there. You know? I don't want no unmixed fragrance floating to the top or anything make sure everything is nice and stirred in this is going to be a really good soap really good now my mold I'm using is something I got from Amazon yeah. it's a bad mold scrape down the sides So anybody that's intimidated by high processor, don't be. Just make sure you get a crock pot that you using only for soap. I got mine from the flea market on, well, I'm in Philadelphia, so it's around here. But it was only $7, and they gave me two of these um, ceramic inserts to go with it. The crock pot is old as dirt. It's like... <laughs> Let me show you the kind of crock pot I got. But it don't even have a warm setting. It's a um a five quart crock pot. From yeah. It's a five quart crock pot. And I made sure I put on there soap only. You wanna make sure no one uses that for food. And it seven dollars. So you definitely can't get a better deal than that. And it still works. I was hoping that it worked. I was like, she only gave me seven for dollars for it, so I'm like, I hope it works. But yes, and it gets very hot. Um, no warm setting, so it's, it's either low or high. And which doesn't bother me because I always soup on high, so. Alright, I'm trying to pick this up. Um, maybe I'm gonna put this right here. I'm hoping you guys can see it. Okay. I usually have my husband in here for this part, 
uh, when he didn't get home yet though. He usually holds the crock pot for me while I scoop it out into the mold. Oh my goodness guys, you really have to, it smells like hot um, pumpkin pie. It really does. It smells really good. So yeah, it was nothing fancy with this soap. I just wanted to make a regular pumpkin. This darn uh, crock pot is so heavy. So I gotta put it down because it's heavy. everything out of here so now I could just tilt it and get the rest out sometimes I'd be thinking like I'm talking to myself uh, and I'd be talking kind of low and I realized duh you're recording and I'd be like I hope on a playback <laughs> when I go to you know look at the video I hope it, it just don't sound like I'm mumbling and you can't hear a thing <laughs> uh, in that case you know that would really suck because I would like you to hear what I'm saying, but sometimes I just forget this is my first video, so I forget that the camera's actually on. Oh, smells good. All right, look at that pot. It looks good. So with that pot, is um, all I would have to do is pour water in it and put the utensils that I used in there. And just let it sit and it turns right to soap. Everything dissolves off all the spoons and spatulas. And you're good to go. Of course I still rewash, but yeah, it's the easiest cleanup in the world with hot process. So easy. Okay. Is down on the floor. Okay. <laughs> so you heard me tapping it down. That's exactly what it sounds like. That someone is jackhammering in here. And I'm just banging it down on the floor trying to get everything, you know, air bubbles out, it leveled. And this is what it looks like. It ain't nothing fancy, but it's going to be a really good soap. So, that's it. And thank you guys so much for watching. Let me see. You can see me? Can you see me? Thank you guys so much for watching. This is my first video, so uh, there will be more to come. <laughs>